Welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. We've been talking a lot about LSU's hot streak uh, that they have been on in recruiting. It's been fun to watch the last couple of weeks here, the last 10 days. It feels like every single day LSU gets getting a commitment, whether it's a number one player from uh, a state uh, outside of the region or if it's a top player within the state of Louisiana. There's a lot of hard work going into that by a lot of people. We've talked to a couple of them. Jamar Kane has come through here after the – uh, the big defensive line successful weekend over the 4th of July. Uh, and there is a, a lot of names that always come up with with recruits and players and coaches. Um, and one of the names that pops up that's not a face that you see on the sideline, working a position group, uh, kind of working from behind the scenes in the recruiting department is Jordan Arsiman. He is a Louisiana native. And uh, we were telling the story about Kyron Lacey who came through here. And I know both of you guys – or Thibodeau natives, and we asked him, we were asking Lacey about some of the guys that had meant uh, a lot to his recruitment. The first name that rolled off his mouth was Jordan Arsiman and kind of talked about um, what you meant to his recruiting. So we're really looking forward to talking to you, man, and I know a lot of people out there are looking forward to putting a, uh, a, a face with the name that they hear within the recruiting world. So thank you for joining us, man. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, man. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. So if, if you can, just – um, can you, somebody who has lived so within the recruiting world for such a while, can you kind of update what the last 10 days have been like for LSU? Man, the last 10 days have been super exciting. You know, I think uh, a lot of hard work went into those last 10 days, and we kind of uh, got a chance to bear the fruits of our labor, you know, and through spring and even just through all those official visits and sometimes wondering, you know, when, uh, the dominoes were going to start to fall, and then they all started to kind of at the same time, which was awesome and uh, I think a bit of a hot streak, man, and we want to continue to ride the wave. Absolutely. You, you mentioned a lot of hard work just kind of paying off. You guys don't anticipate those days to be successive like they have been. Those are just kind of commitment dates lining up for you after years of hard work, right? I mean, what's the timeline on, on, on some of these things that happen? I know that there was a local guy that popped over the last 24 hours. How, how, does, how does something like that – um, what's the timeline on something like that? Yeah, I would say sometimes it is years, right? And, and with this particular staff and everybody coming in in December slash January, um, we kind of been fighting from behind, right? Some guys had previous relationships from previous places, so maybe those relationships have been for years, and then sometimes uh, just having to make up a lot of ground, right? Mm -hmm. We're coming in, I think the 24 class will f will have a chance to have a full cycle. So, uh if people are excited about this class, I think the next one will be super exciting, right? Because wow. we're kind of coming in with just six months. But um, I think timeline can vary, right, from years to um, really just building a relationship and hitting it off and then coming on an official and getting to see everything Baton Rouge has to offer. And sometimes people just hop in the boat. Uh, a lot of people are really amped up about what you guys are doing for the 23 class and even looking forward to the 24. You've got a couple of names that are really nice there sitting with a couple of commitments. But bring me back to 22. H how difficult was that to, to hit the ground running like you guys did and then the success that you were able to have with the 15 signees out of high school and then bringing in the transfers like you did to fill out all of your spots, which is incredible. Yeah, I think uh, for the high school guys, it, it was extremely tough, you know, especially it's kind of what I spoke on from not having those relationships or time to build on and uh, sell the particular university that we all are at right now in LSU, right? And it kind of speaks for itself, you know, the brand does. And um, for all the other guys who came in, it was guys who left the state a lot of times, right? And then came back and they're fulfilling their dreams, you know, maybe sure. maybe didn't have an LSU offer, maybe did, but wanting to come home and put on for their home state. And I think that's really how we filled out a lot of the roster. And I think those guys will be super passionate and play super hard for this particular program because it meant something to them for so long. Yeah. Uh, that Louisiana accent's got to play great in recruiting, bro. Look, man, <laughs> you know, I moved around a little bit, but I never lost the accent, and I hope that I never do. You know, kind of trademarkish. For sure, man. <laughs> uh, you are listed as a recruiting specialist on the site. Um, kind of give me what, what, what your job entails. What, what, what is your do job description? Yeah, I would say a lot of relationship-based. You know, uh, in my previous stop, it was um, – a good bit on the film evaluation side, and I still do some film evaluation, but here at LSU, our staff is really big, and I don't have to do as much film evaluation. It's a lot of just the relationship piece, you know, and helping facilitate uh, the process with some of the coaches. Um, so a lot on the phone, you know, and mm -hmm. then when people come on campus, um, 
showing them a good time, right? And being sure. able to sell LSU, the brand, Brian Kelly, our offense, our defense, our coaches, uh, what it means to play here in Baton Rouge, what it means to play in Tiger Stadium, uh, and how impactful that can be, not only while you're here, but way beyond that. Yeah, you're from South Louisiana, Thibodeau native. What's your experience with LSU? You know, growing up, I was a I was a huge LSU fan. You know, I grew up on LSU football. Uh, I was at the 2003 National Championship as a young kid. I watched LSU win three national championships, play in four. Uh, I think as a kid, um, I, you know, this was my dream to be a part of this. And then as I uh, went on to college to play and then also working at another university, I couldn't be as passionate uh, uh-huh. about it or I had, I had to let sure. it fade a little sure. bit, right? What do you think so about the that, Tigers? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but always followed, you know right. what I mean? Right. And yeah. Especially because everybody on, on the yeah. team, a lot of times was from Louisiana, so I knew those guys from whenever they were young. Uh, and then now to be able to be a part of it, I, I feel like I am a kid again, right? Yeah. To be able to embrace it in whole. And uh, sometimes I find myself in Tiger Stadium on a, on a Sunday night, just me, you know, standing in the middle of the field, like, how did I get here? You mm-hmm. know, so it, it is super powerful, man. I am super passionate about it. And um, I want to bring the best players here and I want to win a championship. Absolutely. There was a, a pipeline that was dug from Louisiana to Virginia that people around here were saying, how in the hell is, is these Louisiana kids having this much interest in the University of Virginia? I called the University High football game on radio for seven years. And Michael Hollins was, was there and was the best player on that team. Yep. For, for, for four straight years uh, and is now experiencing a lot of success at Virginia. We, we have talked about the um, almost, not debate, but um, just kind of going back and forth in recruiting nationally compared to locally. You guys are having success on both ends of it right now, cleaning up nationally and really starting to feel the momentum starting to turn here locally. How do you view that inside of, of the room and what are those conversations like um, from a staff standpoint? Yeah, well, I, I think it starts here, you know, and we have a good bit of people on this particular staff who are from Louisiana, uh, who know and believe in our hearts that this place produces the best football players in the country, you know, and I think the numbers speak for themselves per capita, produce the most NFL players, you know what I mean? So even from an analytical standpoint, it makes sense to take the kids from here because the chances of them playing the league are higher than if they come from anywhere else. Yeah. Um, I think our brand is super powerful, so we will have to recruit at a national level or there's really no reason that we, we shouldn't, you know what I mean? Because if we can get a top player from another state who can help us win a championship, then of course, right? But um, I think it starts right here in Louisiana and then right here in Baton Rouge. You know, mm-hmm. there's some really good players who are still available that are right here in Baton Rouge and we want them on our team. Yeah, you mentioned the brand of LSU. What is it like selling that message? It looks like it's being taken um, – so well when when you talk about just from a national standpoint yeah and i think it kind of sells itself you know just just a few moments ago we talked about three national championships and and four since i played in four right since Mm -hmm. i was a kid so i think from a national stage for a while people have been seeing lsu right the 2019 season i think helped a ton because the the guys who are recruiting now maybe a little bit younger and influential and watching that team and those guys were their favorite players you sure. know or people who they wanted to be like and maybe still want to be like in the nfl because the people who won that team are now playing at a high level in the national football league uh so that helped uh that that helped with the brand <laughs> sure. a, a ton sure. you know so uh it's powerful it mm-hmm. really is and when you have those those three letters across your chest man um I can't think of a better place. What was it like bringing a legend back like Tyron Matthew and seeing the impact he had on addressing the team? And, and what was it like having him around the facility for a week? You know, that was awesome. Uh, a, a real close family friend of mine played with Tyron in college, and he said uh, I used to just pick his brain a lot about LSU and who was on that team and who was the best leaders. And e- even then, you know, prior to, I guess, Tyron's maturity that he is now, he said he was the best leader on the team. And when he would speak, everybody would, it was all eyes on him, right? And uh, to know where he came from and to know, I guess, the adversity or the ups and downs that he faced and to see where he is from a maturity level right now and um, a leadership standpoint, he could come in and capture a room and speak for a whole hour and not miss a beat and have everybody locked in and, and really move that room super powerful you know and, and one thing he spoke on was he wants to be the head coach at lsu one day mm-hmm. and i thought that was that was awesome and uh shoot i would work for him you know? <laughs> right. because uh, he had those guys ready to run through a wall yeah, you know absolutely. and um 
I think any team would be lucky to have him a part of it. Uh, he was very impressed with Brian Kelly, I know, in, in, in just his initial meeting with him that week face-to-face. Uh, -face. What is it like in your position working for Coach Kelly, and kind of how does that relationship work in recruiting? Yeah, I, I think Coach Kelly is really down to earth, man. Um, and he, he's also a, a great leader. He's a real CEO, you know, really process-driven, uh, holds those guys accountable. Um, and I think the numbers speak for themselves. He's won a lot, a lot of games, you know, as the, the winningest active head coach in college football. Uh, I don't think that happened by accident. Mm -hmm. And um, everywhere he's been, he's, he's had success at Notre Dame. He had a ton of success. You know, I was a part of a program. We went up there in Notre Dame, uh, beat our heads in, and we went to the Orange Bowl that year, you mm. know. So to see what type of team he can put on the field, right, and maybe have lesser than, you know, it's not to say that they weren't talented. They were, but it's in Indiana. We're in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. So the, the draw and the pull to get really quality players here, I think, is a lot easier. And just to me, right, what having seen three coaches win a championship here, you know, two of which I don't think uh, yeah. maybe may as, as qualified as Coach Kelly. Sure. You know what I mean? And uh, to, think that, put it. Yeah, <laughs> to, to no, think it. Right. You're right. To think if we'll give him the, the quality of athletes that we can get consistent here, yeah. how don't we win a championship? Oh, yeah. And with the other guys, it happened pretty fast, I think within the first three years, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm hopeful that, you know, the same timeline – lines up and we can get some jewelry man um explain the bk takeover yeah i think i think the thought behind it was coming here and, and taking over the conference and then and taking over college football you know he, he made a pretty bold statement saying that he came here to lsu to beat coach Saban in alabama and i think that's kind of the standard and uh when we live up to that he will have then taken over right mm -hmm. so uh excited to be a part of it yeah absolutely jordan arsenal joining us here um I know that the NIL stuff is such a gray area, but it's it's come into college football and come into recruiting. Um, how do you guys handle those, those conversations at the front line? Yeah, I, you know, there's a lot of gray that, mm -hmm. that's around that particular area. And um, for us, just per rule, we aren't able to discuss any sort of deal on the front end. You know what I mean? But I think Louisiana has made a movement uh, to help mm -hmm. in that area. Right. And I think as our current team continues to be able to capitalize in this new era, when someone's coming in and talking to our current players are seeing the success that our players are having off the field, it speaks for itself. Right. Mm -hmm. And those guys can then envision their selves in their shoes and see, oh, OK, if Keishawn Bouti is doing X, Y or Z, whenever I become Keishawn Bouti, I will then be able to do X, Y or Z. So, um you know, I think as that continues to unfold, maybe it'll be a little less gray. But for now, you know, I leave those conversations to, uh, you know, the people who are supposed to have them, right? And then we just kind of handle it uh, appropriately because we don't want to break any rules. Yeah. This staff seems very tight. It seems like they work uh, very well together. It looked like that on the field in the 15 spring practices. And then here in recruiting, it seems like there's a lot of combination efforts of guys going in on, on prospects. Um, what's it like alongside this staff, working alongside them every day? It is, uh, it's been awesome, you know, and uh, I've kind of been on every side of, of this process from a high school coach to then working in college and being outside of it. So I knew a lot of these guys prior, whether it was them coming to sit in the office when I was a high school coach. So then now to turn around uh, and be working with them and, you know, trying to sign the best players in the country has been super fun, especially somebody like Coach Frank Wilson, who's just – uh, a legend on the recruiting trail, you know, um, having been national recruiter of the year for some for some years and known as kind of the king of recruiting Louisiana. So to be able to uh, be around him and some of that knowledge get passed down, I think it's priceless, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, Coach Joe Sloan, who's been recruiting at a high level in Louisiana for a long time and uh, actually recruited my brother. So I was on the uh, the other side of that phone, wow. right, with, with him uh, calling me till 12 o'clock at night. And then now uh, to be working with him, man, uh, it's been fun, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of other guys on the staff do a really good job. And you, you've seen, right, with just positions uh, filling up and the class that we're putting together that I think um, we have a good group. Yeah. You know, COVID affected so many things and recruiting, I thought, was one of the things that, you know, kind of got lost in what we were talking about. I mean, a guy like Jack Besh didn't earn an LSU offer until midway through his senior season, which felt like a crime. Yeah. You know, I mean, if he would have had a chance to work out no on doubt. campus, that would have probably been done his sophomore year. 
Um, but you guys were able to kind of revitalize the camp efforts. And I, I believe you saw like 1,600 kids and prospects come through there. How important is that to what your department does every day? Huge, man. Huge. Uh, in-person evaluation, I think you, it's second to none, right? You, you watch film, you see highlight videos, whatever you, you can call and you can hear from a coach or somebody that you trust, but it's nothing like seeing it with your own eyes. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I tell the kids a lot of times, man, coming to camp, right? This is, this is them evaluating the coach as well you know we're evaluating you as a player but you have to see if that coach can develop you to the highest level and get you to where you need to go so uh, it goes both ways with people coming out to camp and working out and us being able to see them and some people earning the offer with that but then also guys who already have the offer to get worked out by our coaches who do it at the highest level and to then know okay he can take me to where i'm trying to go yeah absolutely do, do you always work into the future like how much do you pay like did you go out to spring practice are you watching the current team or are you just always working into the next couple of years no for sure watching the current team um i love football mm -hmm. you know and a lot of times uh especially once you're a part of a team for a while those are the guys that you brought in right so then to go out there and watch them and have success uh it's super fulfilling you mentioned Kyron Lacey, you know so all spring you know as i'm uh out there watching and and uh, seeing him make plays, you know, it just makes me smile, you know, and I'm getting to kind of tell that story to the recruits who are coming to watch spring practice as well, just to understand what all went into this and the relationship piece of it all. And then after practice, those guys get to come along and shake hands and whatnot. And it just, I think, gives a chance to the recruits to um, visualize themselves in their shoes. How much has the roster building process changed just in the last two years? I mean, I think the roster building piece has changed so much. The recruiting piece has changed so much. This is the evolution of college football. I think it's a, a fun time to be a part of it. And I think um, – I, I don't know if anybody has the right rhyme or reason on how to do things yet because it is so new, you mm -hmm. know. So it's almost uh, trial and error. And I think in a few years – people will have more of a grip on what's that that process right but with with the transfer portal with people being able to leave uh i mean it's it's, it's definitely changed the game how much into the future are you working how, how far down the line are you evaluating uh i mean i watched i mean how far down i watched a kid yesterday on twitter he's 2028 20, and he, he dunked for the first time in the, in the sixth grade so you Louisiana know I mean? kid? oh yeah no so, doubt <laughs> so I, I was like all right you know so i would say that's probably the uh you know but right. uh truly probably down to 2026 20, sure um when you evaluate the current team right now and the way that you guys were able to do it the transfer portal um how do you, how do you view the transfer portal in 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 your process in your part of the yeah process? I mean I like it I think uh, it also what it does is it can make you competitive uh, each and every year is how I feel and even if you know we are having a lot of success on the recruiting trail but if you are to miss on the recruiting trail and you have some young guys mm -hmm. who can't do it yet you can feel voids that maybe in the past you needed guys to continue to develop like oh man we just have a freshman there i hope he can do it this year or when you're trying to bring a guy in you're like well he needs to be able to play year one now uh when you're bringing those freshmen in, it's not so much pressure on those guys to have to play right now because you can go get somebody who's proven on the college landscape to come fill a spot that you need so i think for us with uh how many we brought in it can make us competitive in year one what's your feeling of the sec I mean, I think it's the best conference in college football. I think week in and week out, it'll be super competitive. Um, I think they won't have very many easy wins, right? You have to bring your A game. Uh, but I think even from practice one for us in spring, um, you could see just a, a culture shift and how hard the guys were working, um, how efficient practice was. And I think they're really buying in, you know? Yeah. So t to me, again, speaking on just the past of Coach Kelly, I don't think any of that happened by accident, sure. you know, so it's the Brian Kelly effect, man. And, and for him to come in and put his hand on these guys and um, he has some really talented athletes here. Yeah. So uh, I think we'll be really competitive in SEC. Um, appreciate you joining us this morning, man. I, I got to imagine it's pretty fun walking the halls right now. At LSU yeah, for football. sure, for sure, man. It's always fun walking the halls at LSU, you know. But yeah. uh, to, to have some recent success and all these guys hopping in the boat, I think people um, are, are seeing the vision, you know, and understand what's coming here in Baton Rouge and wanting to be a part of it. And why wouldn't they, right? Because we're going to win a championship. How how long does this stay? It feels like you guys are going 100 miles an hour. How long do you 
keep that pace until the season? How much does that go into the that part of it? Well, I'm you know leading up to the season, I think we hope to have uh, at least a handful more in the boat. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But it, this goes all the way to signing day. You know, no we, we we were talking to our student workers. I think it was maybe yesterday or the day before, and we spoke on a recruiting process. And the last slide that on the PowerPoint was you, you have to recruit until that paperwork gets sent in to compliance, you know, because even the day of, right, you have your whole class, but especially for the guys who are super sought after, mm -hmm. people are really pulling at them, yeah. you know, and it gets uh, it gets intense, especially at the end, and, and that's kind of crunch time, you know, and when we came in in December uh, this past year and having, you know, that second signing period, um, we had some fireworks just at the end and, and to see Harold put on the hat on TV, you know, you still had your fingers crossed kind of yeah. deal. We, we, you know, we were feeling like we were, we were definitely going to get him, but still just the anticipation and knowing sure. how many people wanted him, you know, uh, and it was cool to experience in year one, like, and especially just getting there mid year and to see him, uh, you know, speak really highly on the program and, and why he bought in and then put on that hat. And we had a celebration in coach Frank's office. Uh, I thought that was really cool, but it was literally recruiting up until, he put on that hat, right? Yeah. And I, I don't anticipate it being any different this year with some of the premier guys we're going after. How does it change recruiting your roster every year? How, how, how much has that changed? That's something that I, I've really been thinking about, you know, and, and again, this is all still really new. Uh -huh. I mean, this is the first full year, I guess, with, with this these particular rules in place, and that's where I think um, or that's where I want to provide a lot of value because on the front end, I'm so relationship-based with getting the guys – uh, to come here and then in a role that is not your coach, right? So I don't have to maintain some sort of like, I, I don't know how to put it, right, where I have to tell you what to do day in and day out. So our relationship is different and to maintain those relationships uh, with the current team and to be there for them, right, and be able to hear them out when they're having problems, uh, I think, you know, is really valuable because if they're going through something they're considering transferring they'll lean on the people that they trust you know what i mean and if that relationship on the front end was so deep that then they're coming to lean on you as you are there uh amongst the staff you can have some sort of influence on just helping them through their problem but also helping retain them on the team and just giving them some real talk you know what i mean like yeah coach is tough on you but he's tough on you because he wants you to reach your ultimate goal yeah. so uh i think recruiting current team is uh I'm not going to say recruit, but just maintain positive relationships so they understand why they signed up here in the first place. you got a powerful personal story that, that affected your, your area from where you are with hurricanes and families and loss and adoption. I, I don't, are you okay telling that story? I, I've got to put you on the spot here. Yeah, but yeah, sure. I, I know that, that, that there is a local kid here at U University High that you've had an enormous impact on his life. Can you tell that story for our yeah. listeners? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, the story goes back to when I was a high school coach, really. Um, Dontavian Martin, who uh, I coached at Ellender High School, they, you know, had a rough situation. His mother had passed. His dad was incarcerated. Um, and it's kind of how I really, really got introduced to this recruiting process. And I spoke on some of the coaches that I met and Joe Sloan and uh, recruiting, recruiting him, who I refer to as my brother, right? Uh, I met a lot of people, uh, facilitated his whole process, official visits. Um, and I really took a liking to that particular process, right? And, and he went off to Washington State originally. Uh, when he went off to Washington State, I went off to Virginia, uh, but stayed super close-knit, you know what I mean? And I and, uh, just helped him along that way. And then it, when, when COVID happened, he was back home. The Pac-12 considered canceling the season, right? And it, there was really just no time to waste. Uh, so he ended up transferring to Oklahoma State. And, and even despite me being at Virginia, I helped him facilitate that and talking to the head coaches uh, at each of those programs to get him where he needed to be. Uh, last year was his senior year at Oklahoma State. He led the Big 12 in receiving wow. and is now with the San Francisco 49ers. But his little brother, uh, Zay Martin, who uh, lives with me now, I'm his guardian, um, you know, he was just, he was young whenever that whole uh, process began. And I think for Tay, uh, the future was super bright, right? Like, even though all the, uh, the adversity was going on, he was going to be Tay Martin in college, right? And, and Zay was uh, the, the young one who still just had so much time um, and, and kind of had to fight through more adversity, right? And, and maybe bounced a few places, you know, just on where he needed to live. And then when the hurricane happened uh, this past year, I was living in Houston at the time, and Zay was staying with an aunt in Houston after Homer was just kind of devastated. You know, the place he was living was not livable anymore. 
um, we had stayed in contact through those years, and I brought him. Uh, I brought him to the mall for you know. I just picked him sure. up, you know, just give him something to do while we were in Houston. And then I asked, "You want to go watch your brother play, right?" Because I was going last year. I, I had a year off, really, and I, I went for that reason, right? It was Tay's last year. I had to be a part of that. We put so much time into it. I wanted to watch him play. So Zay came with me to uh, one of his games, and uh, then you know, by the time we were leaving that that game it was like well, what's your situation like where are you going to go if you go back to home because they hit you know the place he was staying was no longer livable right and he didn't know so uh i was like man you know you can come stay with me and he ended up making the decision to do that and i had him in school in houston at the woodlands and then uh all this stuff with lsu kind of came up and i was like you do you want to go back home you want to move back to baton rouge being louisiana he's like, hell yeah <laughs> you know so uh we, we came back to baton rouge and uh he enrolled in u high um and they have a super super you know talented roster uh they sure. run a, a really good program coach martin does and uh i think the future is bright you know and it's been day by day uh we're continuing to develop uh for him but super excited for the future, you know, a uh, really good athlete, gets a chance to be around LSU and, and the players who uh, are on our current roster, which I think is really inspiring for sure. him, you know. And, uh, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? His, sure. his brother is in the NFL now, and um, I think uh, Zay will have a shot to be a, a premier, you know, player in the state of Louisiana. That is a cool story, man. That is a cool story. Uh, sure. Wrap it up for me on this. You just mentioned the LSU stuff move fast. How did you end up here? How did it start? So I guess another interesting story, right? We, we go back to Joe Sloan again, right? So I had just got into college football, man, working at Virginia, and I had dealt with Joe in the recruiting process with Tay, and it went all the way down to the end, you know, with dealing with Joe. So he got a chance to really get to know me. And as soon as I went up to Virginia, Joe called and wanted me to interview for the director job at Louisiana Tech. So I was like, you know what, Joe, I'll come on down there and interview, right? So uh, John Randall Belton at the time was a student, sure. right? And, and uh, JR was uh, a, a prominent prospect in the state until he had injury and then had more injury in college. So while he was still on scholarship, he was kind of interim director at the time at Tech, you know? So JR picks me. I didn't know anybody who would have been a part of my staff. I were to take that job, right? JR picked me up. Uh, and was driving me around and showing me Rustin, right, and kind of selling the program, right, if, if I wanted to be a part of it. And uh, he and I both suffered uh, injury, and we kind of hit it off with that. And we just uh, found some similarity, and I knew if I did take that job, I'd have somebody who was really good, a part of my team, right? Sure. Um, and I ended up not taking the job. I, I stayed at Virginia, but me and JR stayed in touch. And uh, it was like a couple years later, I was at a coach's convention, and I saw Jr. in the hallway. I'm like, "What's up, man? How are you?" You know, we we started talking. He's like, "Man, I'm looking for a job. I'm about to graduate." I was like, "Oh, you looking for a job?" I was like, "Man, come on, come sit down. Come sit down with us." So I brought him sit down with everybody at Virginia, and uh, they really liked him. Like, man, he's gonna be really good. I'm like, "Yeah, I, I know he will be." You know, right. so that's why I'm taking he, him over here. Yeah. <laughs> so he came up and uh, worked at Virginia with me. But uh, when he got there, it was kind of during that COVID stage, and that's whenever I was phasing out and knowing that. I was about to leave, right? So I, I left, right? Uh, JR got my job at Virginia. And so, you know, I feel like I still blessed him, right? And then uh, I moved to Louisiana, and then uh, his name got super hot, man. So I had just moved back here. JR's calling me uh, with a bunch of opportunity, and then LSU came up with the previous staff. And I'm like, bro, you, you got to take that job, you know? So he came to LSU with the previous staff as director of scouting. Um, and, and did a really good job, and I think that's why he was retained, right, and then became the director of recruiting here wow. at LSU. And wow. uh, it's just that the football family, right, and, and this journey, and then when he became director of recruiting and was able to uh, hire people, you know, he called me. And uh, at first I, I just I, I didn't know, you know what I mean, I had kind of changed my life. And I'm like, you know what, Jr. I believe in you, you know, and I do, and I think he's a, uh, I think he's a rising star in this industry, and and I was willing to come back because of that, and because uh -huh. of Coach Kelly and his vision, right? So it just all aligned, and and here I am. See that, kids? Power of relationships, <laughs> big time. Relationships, man. Big that's what time. your that's what your life is built on. I'd imagine. Definitely, you know, You're recruiting and, and professional. That football can take you a lot of places. You know, that brown. We're sitting right here because of that brown ball, right? That's what we're talking about. It's football, yeah. you know. So I think uh, as long as you represent yourself the right way, shake the right hands, and, and are a good person, um, you know, the future is bright for anybody who plays the game. A lot of people impressed with you that are listening inside of our chat. We've got over 400 people in there live right now with a lot of comments, a lot of people down in South Louisiana in the home of Thibodeau. 
area. Proud of what you're accomplishing and representing LSU, man. Thank you for finding the time for us this morning. I know you got a really busy schedule. Congratulations on all the success and keep it up. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Jordan Arsimit checking in this morning from LSU. We'll be back with more of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet.